welcome to Stay on the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. Very excited about these next two episodes I'm going to do. I'm going to do part one and part two because it would take me too long to cover these. Um, I'm going to uh, review Josh Maloney's wines, or Maloney. Now, Josh Maloney, and I got my phone here because I, I can't remember all the details on this, but Josh Maloney I met about five or six years ago. He started working for, well, maybe seven years ago now. He started working for Millbrandt Vineyards, and I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Millbrandt. They were my wine of the year a few years back on my blog, and I'm good friends with Butch Millbrandt. Um, Gordy Hill left Millbrandt, and they were searching for a winemaker, and they uh, put it out on winebusiness.com, and Josh Maloney applied for the job, and they hired him. He worked for St. Michelle, Chateau St. Michelle in Washington State, for six years. Then he worked for Millbrandt for five years, and then he was abruptly dismissed from that job. And I say abruptly because he... I talked with Josh, I love Josh, he's a great winemaker, and he was totally thrown off guard by this. He thought for sure he had, he was solid in that company, and no doubt it was for business reasons. I understand that you have to run a business, you have to run a profitable business. Millbrand, you have Millbrand Wines, you have Waluk Wine Company out of uh, Mattawa. Uh, they produce a lot of wines for different wineries. But I'm sure that Jerry Millbrand felt that uh, uh, fiscally, it would be better to let Josh go. I was very bummed. I was very bummed about that. Josh has two cute little kids, a wife, and he's a very good winemaker. Well, now he's, uh, while he was at Millbrandt, he started this label, Maloney Wines. And the idea was to do uh, vineyard specific Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, great idea. And he produced his first one, which I believe is what he sent me, the 2012 Elephant Mountain Vineyard Rattlesnake Hills Cabernet Sauvignon. And the next one was the 2013 Scutney Flats Vineyard uh, from Red Mountain Cabernet Sauvignon. <clears throat> I've had, uh, I did an interview with him at the San Juan County Fair a couple of years ago. I will put the link down there for you to see that if you'd like to watch that video again. It was great to do that live audience. Um, love Josh to death. He's now consulting for Bronco Wine Company with some of the things that they're doing up here in Washington State. And he's also pointed out that he is also consulting for a new company called Riddix. Uh, and I'll put that link up here, RiddixWine.com. He's done some consulting for Dusted Valley. I think they turned the corner when he helped them out. He's also looking at doing a second label uh, of, um, uh, he says, what did he say here? Single Appalachian, not single vineyard, single Appalachian. So he's like, he'll do a Horse Heaven Hills cab, a Red Mountain cab, a Waluk Slope cab, a Walla Walla cab at a little lower price than his cab now. And he's actually lowered the price on his cabs <coughs> They were running about 65 retail. He's now down to 45 retail. So I'm excited to review these. Um, he told me a while back that the 2012 Elephant Mountain Vineyards Cab was drinking fantastic. Let's see how it's doing. Yeah, I, I've taken, I did a blending deal with Josh at Millbrandt a few years ago. He gave a nice tour of the winery not too long ago with Susie and I. Um, I just think he's a world-class winemaker. He's a great guy, and um, I hope the best for him. But he's really doing well with these labels right now. He has a huge fan group up here in the San Juan Islands. Um, so I know some of you that are watching, that are going to be watching this, are going to be excited about this. Let's see what we get on the nose. Um, this is the 2012 Ra Elephant Mountain Vineyard out of Rattlesnake Hills, 15.5 alcohol percentage, Maloney Single Vineyard Cabernet Sauvignon, and I believe now you can get your hands on it for around 45 bucks. There you go. Solid um, cherry and currant notes. 
A little bit of licorice coming through, which I like. I'm getting a little bit of like a, a, a almost like clay mixed with earth element coming through, which I kind of find intriguing. A little candy licorice thing going on under, uh, underneath. Let's see what we get on the palette. I will say this right off the bat. Um, by the way, these are all still enclosure screw caps. It's hard to review wines from a friend. So this may be slanted a little in his favor. I try not to do that. To be quite honest with you, I try not to do that. But I'm pretty confident because Josh is a great winemaker that these wines will be solid. And this one is definitely it. Very spicy on the palate. It feels a little closed right now. I think it's probably going to a stage. Josh told me about a year ago or six months ago that it's really drinking phenomenal. But like with all great wines, they tend to go through a dumb stage and they pop out again then they go through all that. Um, so this is a, shows up to me a little closure on the mid palate. talking solid wine here. Solid wine. I get black pepper, tar, tobacco, currants, cherries, a little bit of uh, uh, a little bit of a marinade component coming through. Almost meaty. I'm talking like roasted meat coming through on the palate. This baby has 10, 15 years of life easily in it. Very, very meaty, very intense. Uh, for those of you who have bought some of this, maybe, I might even wait another five years before I open it right now. I get a little red flower component. The finish is, there's a lot of, I get some oak coming through, but it's balanced. I taste like really a woody character coming through on the backside. It has a flat spot in the mid palate, for sure. And I think that is the stage that it is developing in. I'm going to go with that because that's what I feel. Having tasted many, many wines, when you get that kind of flat nothingness in the middle, that's usually because it's going through a stage where it's doing, it's, it's morphing into something else. heavy on the oak for me personally but that's because I think this fruit is in a dumb stage and it's not expressing itself very well. I'm gonna go straight up um, it's a solid wine um, it's got great complexity it has excellent potential I'm gonna go straight up a minus on that I think it's a very solid wine and if you can get your hands on it for 45, I don't know what Josh is selling for. I don't even know if he has any left. He probably doesn't. He sent me this bottle probably out of his library because all winemakers hold off a little for themselves. But I can see this. I think I have a bottle downstairs. I can see this doing really well. In another, I'll give it another five years. Might be an A-plus wine. Let's move on. 2013 Maloney Single Vineyard Cabernet Sauvignon. Scutney Flats Vineyard out of Red Mountain. You all know what a Red Mountain fan I am, so I'm excited to try this. Um, should roll in about 45 bucks or 65, depending on if he's selling some of his other cabs at the lower price. I'm not sure. I could have emailed him, but I didn't ask him that question. But even at 65 bucks, yeah, you got a good value going on, even with this elephant mountain. Excited to try this one? Not sure if I have this one yet. 
Did I do a close up? Probably, yeah, I did. I look pretty close to say. Let's see what we get on the notes. This is exciting. 12, 13. The next one will be 14, 15, the next episode. So I'm excited about that. Let's see what we get on the notes. Once again, very, very meaty on the nose. I mean, I'm like talking meat with a little bit of splash of um, some sort of a marinade going on, like it's been marinating in, one of the, in a bag for a while. I get a little bit of a, 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 a twig, like dried twig component coming through. Let's see what we get on the palate. This baby has more structure than the Library of Congress, I'm, I'm telling you. A little grippy. Uh, this is young, wine. 13, one of my favorite vintages in Washington State, so I was very excited to try this. Very spicy, just like it's a sibling there. Very spicy, get a little bit of white pepper, black pepper thing going on. Um, very wound up, you know, actually this reminds me a little bit of a, a very young Bordeaux in style. Doesn't have a flat spot on the mid palate at all. Uh, I get tobacco, I get currants, I get a little bit of tar, I get meat, I get all of those things. I get oak tannins big time. I just being friends with Josh, I know he likes to use a lot of new oak on this, and that comes through. This needs time. It definitely needs time. It needs another at least five to eight years before it fully expresses itself. But it's good structure, great structure, great wine. Very needs food, by the way. I should have a big old rib steak right now, eating this with a rib steak, because I'm telling you, it would really change the, the, uh, the impression this wine gives on your palate. You need some meat with this. That tobacco that tarry, that meaty, that currants. Wow, this is a, this is a massive, this is a massive wine. This is massive old school, and that's what I like about Josh. He's made some wines at Millbrandt that were a little, you know, fairly plush, but this is like old school. This is like going to Bordeaux and trying, doing a barrel tasting at Bordeaux and getting some of these, trying to figure out in your mind as a wine critic or as a, you know, guy that drinks wine. Where is this wine going to go? This has a lot of complexity. This has a lot of layers. It has good harmony. It has great uh, synergy. It's, you know, good. Uh, it's very um, well built, but it's not ready to drink yet. I mean, it's certainly not. It, it, but I will have this little asterisk. If you had a big rib steak, this would probably be great with it. I mean, absolutely fantastic. In fact, I'm going to try that. I'm going to close these up, try them over the next four or five days because I'm telling you right now that um, these guys, they just have a lot of personality. They just have a lot going on and they're not built to um, satisfy the jelly bean society out there that likes their wines, you know, ready to go, like Apothic Red and all that. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that, but that is not what these wines are for. Good job, Josh. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go A minus on that one as well because I don't know where that's going for sure, but I think it's gonna turn into a solid A A plus wine. That's my guess. 
I do the best I can. Subscribe to my channel if you get a chance. There's a subscribe button. Hit it. Subscribe. Hit the bell so you can see what's going on. Hook up with me on Twitter at, at StanTheWineMan. On Instagram, StanTheWineMan. You keep watching. And I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.